everybody. Now, I hold this target up as an example of some truly astonishing marksmanship. Note, if you will, the grouping of the shots. Three to the body, three to the head. Textbook stuff. Step forward, Mr Chapman, sir. Remarkable shooting, if I may say so. Oh, thank you very much. Especially when you consider that this target was from lane seven, <laughs> and you, Mr Chapman, were in lane one. <laughs> For goodness sake, sir, is there anything wrong with your eyesight? You could kill someone with shooting like this. <laughs> just guns, I'm afraid. I don't like them. You don't have to like them, sir. You just have to learn how to use them. It's what basic training's all about. Right, reload. fingers and go bang. <laughs> you know, my wrist really aches. <laughs> I've been on the firing range all day. <laughs> if you think that's bad, you want to wait till tomorrow. Self-defence. It won't just be your wrist that hurts. <laughs> well, you've been here before then, have you? It's my fourth time. Yeah, it's just refresh, of course, for us. But you weren't on the firing range today. No, oh, no, that's because I was down for field craft. That is, tracking, map reading, that sort of thing. Oh, how'd you get on? Not very well, actually. I couldn't find the classroom. <laughs> but he'll be back on the map with us tomorrow, won't you, Dex? Getting into the peak of physical condition. I already am, old son. You are looking at a lean and mean fight in machine. My body is a temple. <laughs> All right. Fancy coming for a few beers and a curry? Not half. <laughs> hey. Uh, no, I'll stay here, thanks. Oh, well, suit yourself. Come on, lads. See Have you later. a good time. Excuse me, do you mind if I sit here? Um, no. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. Believe me, I don't make a habit of accosting strangers in bars, but I'm trying to stay out of reach. Of whom? Our sales force. I don't know what it is about sales conferences that brings out the dirty old men in them. They seem to think that it's a company perk to touch up all the females from head office. Oh, God. You're not one of our reps, are you? No. Oh, thank goodness. Mind you, I thought not. You don't have that come for a grope in my Ford Sierra look. Oh, well, that's nice to know. My name's Helen, by the way. Yes, Helen Williams. How did you know that? You're wearing a label on your dress. Ah, oh, right. And, um, do you have a label? Yes. It says I'm machine washable. <laughs> no, actually, my name's Peter. I'm pleased to meet you. Uh, oh, look, I'm sorry. I'm obviously interrupting your work. Oh, no, really. It'll keep. <laughs> what is it that you do? Um, well, it's sort of civil service. You know, it's terribly dull. Can't be any worse than selling bathroom accessories. We're launching a new range of soap dishes next week. Exciting stuff, eh? Oh, well, I won't be able to sleep now you've told me. <laughs> and they take the whole thing so seriously. They go absolutely berserk if you miss your target. Yes, they do in my business. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get you a drink? Uh, well, if you're absolutely sure, yes. I'm not interrupting. Yes, no, not at all. Uh, excuse me, what would you like? A uh, Campari and soda, please. Right. Uh, could I have a Campari and soda and another gin and tonic? Certainly, sir. And will you be dining in the restaurant tonight? Oh, yes, yes, I think so. Very good, sir. I'll bring you a menu. And I believe your party are gathering in the Tennyson suite. Oh, I could do without that. Well, look, in that case, would you have dinner with me? Oh, right. I'll make it a table for two, then. I've got Chapman for you, sir. Thank you, Truman. <laughs> Hello, Piglet. I see they've been taking care of you. I wasn't ready. 
I was just bowing to the instructor like they do on the TV, and he'd need me in the nose. <laughs> that is all part of the learning process, but that's not why I'm here. Do sit down. Do you recognise her? Yes. Yes, we shared a rather good Chateaubriand last night. Yes, I know. And what else? Well, we had dessert. Um, I had a creme caramel. Richard, I'm a... talking about intercourse, not second course. <laughs> what? Did anything happen between you? Well, certainly not. <laughs> Did you happen to catch her name? Yes, Helen Williams. Well, for your information, Pickett, her name is not Helen Williams, it's Helga Koenig, and she has come from East Germany. Well, hasn't everyone? <laughs> the difference being that Helga is KGB controlled. She's a spy? No. I mean, she's stunning. Well, not all enemy agents look like Rosa Klebb. <laughs> no, her English is perfect. There's not, a, there's not a trace of a foreign accent or anything. Oh, don't be so naive, Piglet. Darling Helga's a swallow. A swallow? Well, what's that? A brown owl, girl guide sort of thing? <laughs> no, you don't get badges for what she does, Piglet. Swallows are girls who are specially selected for their looks by the KGB. They are then sent to a special camp. They are trained to seduce specifically targeted Westerners. Your Helen Williams will know how to satisfy a man's every sexual whim, every deviation, every fantasy, and do take that smirk off your face. <laughs> well, it's taking Glasnost a bit far, isn't it? It's not Glasnost, Piglet. It's blackmail. They want secrets, information, technical stuff, anything they can lay their hands on, and they use the swallows to get it. They target businessmen, politicians, civil servants. They even have teams of ravens, men who are similarly trained. To seduce the female targets? Sometimes. <laughs> anyway, they film all the bedroom activity and then threaten to send the victim's wife a VHS copy. Well, that wouldn't bother me. I've got Betamax. No. <laughs> oh, that's very droll, Piglet. Anyway, the scheme seems to work awfully well for them. You'd be surprised how many men would rather risk a prison sentence than face the wrath of their wives. <laughs> Look, sir, are you sure she's just using me? Because well, I got the impression she really rather fancied me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, please. <laughs> well, we don't know. Might have been her day off. <laughs> Did a coal miner go potholing on his day off? No, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Piglet, but you're strictly business to her. Oh, well. We had arranged to have a drink in the bar this evening, but now you've warned me, I'll steer well clear of her. You'll do no such thing. We want you to go all the way. <laughs> this is the golden opportunity to break the whole cell. This girl doesn't work alone, you know. She's part of a team. If we can find out who they are, where the film goes to, then we can break the whole thing up. Are you saying you want me to seduce her? No, she'll do most of that. All you have to do is lie back and think of England. But what happens if Sarah finds out? Well, she won't. Oh, don't give me that. I've seen Fatal Attraction. I know what happens when you get involved with bits on the side. One minute you're getting on like a house on fire, the next minute she's boiled your rabbit and she's rearing up out of the bath with a carving knife. Oh, don't be ridiculous, man. We'll intercept the film. Your wife will be none the wiser. Believe me, Piglet. You'll be doing your country an enormous service. No, I'm sorry, sir. I can't risk it. And what with doing all that with somebody watching, well... No, no, I'm sorry. I'm just not up to it. Piglet, I'm sure you'll do admirably. Now, just get in there and bonk for Britain. <laughs> I'm glad we decided to eat away from the hotel tonight. Yes. Yes, it was nice. And away from business colleagues as well. <laughs> right. How were your oysters? Great! <laughs> Just hope to God they weren't. <laughs> There's brandy on the table. Why don't you pour us one? I'll be out in a minute. OK. Different? <laughs> Do 
You know, I don't think Piglet's the right man for this sort of work. He's so naive. He didn't even realise he was being approached by the girl. <laughs> I've never been approached by a girl, sir. No. <laughs> Not professionally, I mean. There was a moment at King's Cross Station, but I don't really count that. <laughs> sir one large brandy thank you would you put that on room 387 please i wouldn't mind one of those sir i'm sure you wouldn't dexter thank you so much <laughs> anyway you're on duty yes sir of course is everyone in place yes sir although i can't speak for piglet <laughs> what the hell are you doing here i can't go through with it sir I'm sorry, but I really can't. I thought I could, and I can't, all right? It certainly is not all right. What on earth are you playing at? She started. Started? Well, yes, you know. Back to her room for coffee, slipping into something more comfortable, all that. Well, so? Well, it'll be the full thing next, the whole business. Well, that's the general idea. For goodness sake, man, you're putting us in a very difficult position. Look, if I go back up there, she'll put me in one. <laughs> Piglet, get back up there right now. Oh, look, That sir. is an order. All right. Look, you will intercept that tape, won't I've you? I've already told you we will. Now, just go away and smile for the camera. Well, that's just it. I can't even find out where it is. It's, it's not behind the mirror. It's not behind any of the pictures. Does she have a briefcase? Yes. Yes, she does. Oh, you were a long time. I was starting to get worried. I'm not used to being stood up. I'll bet. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, no, no. I meant to have a good-looking girl like you. And you're a good-looking guy. We obviously deserve each other. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the truth is, I've wanted you from the first moment I saw you in the bar. And I'd hate you to think that I make a habit of this sort of thing. Oh. <laughs> well, no, 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 of course not, no. Do you want to make love? Um, well, uh... Do you want to think about it? Um... I prefer it with a light on. Well, I prefer it with the light off. <laughs> On's best. <laughs> no, it's not. You can see so much more. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello. Do you think I could have another large brandy? I'm afraid the bar's just closed. Oh, dear. I'll see what I can do, sir. Thank you. How very kind. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, madam. Um, I'm looking for my husband. I believe he was in the bar earlier. He's very tall and slim with straight brown hair. And what's his name, madam? Peter Chapman. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, you look terrible. You look like you've been at it all night. <laughs> you know. Oh, no, it's uh, nothing like that. Right? Well, I just feel a bit rough, that's all. Well, go and get yourself a good old fry up. That'll sort you out. Uh -huh. <laughs> Morning, Steve. Morning, Flint. Morning. Morning, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, what are you doing here? I arrived last night. I had expected to find you here. <laughs> Well, I, I, I was here. I've, I've just been very busy. I thought, well, you should have phoned first. I did phone first, but no one could find you. That's why I stopped by. Well, why go to all that trouble? I just wanted to let you know that I'd be spending a couple of days with Gary and Rosemary while you were on this course. I didn't want you to phone up and start worrying when you got no reply. I needn't have bothered, need I? The hotel had been very understanding, though. They found me a room at short notice. Oh, well, you should have used my room. 
I did use your room. <laughs> Look, Sarah, it's, it's not what you think. Oh, really? And what do I think? <laughs> well, you think I've been up to no good. I've been misbehaving, messing about, having a bit on the side. Don't you? I don't know. You tell me. Well, Sarah, how could you even think it? So, where did you sleep last night? Well, what it was, it, uh, a few of us got together and I had a few drinks and I got a bit smashed. And I suppose it was too late for you to make the long journey back to your own room. <laughs> no, um, what happened was I, um, I crashed out on the floor of, of somebody else on the course. I see. <laughs> Good morning, Peter. <laughs> was it her floor you slept on? No, of course not. She's not even on our course. Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, let me explain. Get away from me, you bastard. Look, just listen, would you? I've got a perfectly good explanation as to what happened last night. Oh, yes? Come on, then, let's hear it. It's to do with my work. I thought it might be. And, of course, that's as far as your explanation is likely to go, because you're not allowed to tell me anything about it. Well, that's true, but I'm going to tell you anyway. The fact is, I work for British Intelligence, and last night I was on a mission of national importance. And that's the best you can come up with. <laughs> if you're just going to lie to me, then don't bother saying anything. Sarah, it's the truth! Yeah, a few problems on the home front, Piglet. That was my wife. Yes, I know. She turned up last night. Well, why didn't you warn me? Well, I would have done, old boy, but you weren't in your room. <laughs> right. And thanks to that, I am now in big trouble with Sarah. Well, things aren't likely to get much better, Piglet. Oh. The only way it could possibly be worse is if you failed to pick up the Russian courier and the tape of last night's activities were in the wrong hands. <laughs> you promised. No, the situation is not irredeemable. We'll just have to get the tape back. Oh, right. Yes, well, let's all nip down to Kensington, shall we? We'll knock on the embassy door. Yes, hello, mister. Can we have our tape back? Don't be puerile, piglet. Now, all we need is a bit of leverage to get darling Helga to return the tape. If she's compromised you, then we'll have to compromise her. Of course, we'll need someone with experience and seniority, someone that she's never met before. Thank you. Yes, 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 of course I know what to do. <laughs> and if you'd done your job properly in the first place, Morris, I could have been down at my club instead of coming down here to bail you out. Well, it wasn't my fault. It was Lewis who lost the courier. Well, how did he manage that? Well, apparently the courier went through a red light. Well, couldn't Lewis have done the same? Not on a Green Line bus. <laughs> he was on a bus? Yes, he thought he'd be less conspicuous. <laughs> I have spoken to him. So what happens now? Well, we try and get the girl to come across. Well, she has done before. I see no reason why she won't again. <laughs> I'm talking about getting her to change sides and return the film. Well, she's not likely to do that. Well, she might if we can convince her that we have evidence to show that she really works for us. But she doesn't. I know. But if you were the KGB and you saw a photograph of Helga receiving a thick envelope from a senior MI5 officer, what would you think? That she was on the take. Exactly. So there's your envelope, Andrew, and there's your camera, Piglet. Me? Well, why me? Can't you get Lewis to do it? I don't think the KGB would be too impressed with 24 shots of an aspidistra, do you? <laughs> no, I suppose not. Right, well, I think we'll find our femme fatale in her usual hunting ground, gentlemen. <laughs> well, hello. Hello. You don't recognise me, do you? I'm sorry, should I? The George Fairbrother. We met at Tom and Lucinda's wedding. 
think you've got me mixed up with someone else. I don't know a Tom and Lucinda. But you're Jeremy Franklin's daughter, aren't you? No, I'm afraid not. Are you sure? Perfectly. Oh, I say, I do apologise. I feel such a fool. Oh, please, there's no need. But well, look, I've just ordered some tea. Would you care to join me? Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, please, I do hate sitting in hotel lounges on my own. Oh, all right. Ah. Yes, I've been selling yachting supplies. So <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, I've got our latest catalogue here. Perhaps you'd like to see it. The tea, sir. <laughs> uh, no, 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 you don't want to look at that now, my dear. Let's have our tea first. Uh, actually, do you mind if I change my mind? I didn't realise how late it was getting and I must be going. Oh, what a shame. But you, you've got to look at our catalogue first. Oh, right. Thank you. <laughs> Just better check that it's our latest edition. Yes, it is. Now, keep it. I've got plenty more. Thank you. Goodbye. Is that it, Piglet? Is that as far as you went with her? Well, oh, that was far enough, wasn't it? Well, it's hardly blackmail material. I've seen more erotic stuff in the Waltons. <laughs> what happened? Conscience get the better of you? No, those bloody oysters did. <laughs> I spent the entire evening in her bathroom. Well, I can't believe we went to all that trouble to get the tape back just for that. Look, the fact I was in that girl's room would have been good enough for Sarah. If she'd have found out, that would have been my marriage out of the window. Still, all's well that ends well, eh? Uh, well, uh, no, not exactly. You see, this arrived in the post this morning, and, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure what to do with it. <laughs> Bloody hell. That's you. And the waitress from the hotel. Yeah, well, well, I mean, how was I to know? I mean, her English was perfect. She didn't have a trace of that. <laughs> look, um, look I, 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 I still think that we can turn her. I mean, if she got you into a sex trap, then perhaps we could do the same to her. We? What do you mean, we? Well, uh... Oh, Piglet, my dear fellow. No, no, no. Oh, Piglet. No. No! 